So this hack has been able to save me about 20 hours a week on ticket management, and you can essentially fix bugs using AI without writing a single line of code with MCPs. Now you probably heard all the hype with MCPs. They're essentially model context protocols that was uh, released by Anthropic. And what it really is, is an interface between your AI assistants and your existing tools, dev environments, or repositories. Think of it as a two-way connection between your AI agent and your data. Now, how you can use MCPs specifically is with Cursor, is you can use it to integrate with your existing tools like Linear where we manage our tickets. So what I wanna show you is, is essentially um, different MCPs that are available and how you can actually get it set up in Cursor and get it working to uh, retrieve information from your tickets. So uh, you have different uh, categories of like API integrations, image processing, tool and data integration. We're gonna go ahead and go with Linear. Um, and essentially you can connect it to Claude or Cursor. In this case, we're gonna use Cursor because we wanna pull all the uh, ticket data that we have. And this could be bugs, support tickets, whatever the case is. Um, and you can see the installation steps here. Uh, basically, all you gotta do is get your API key from Linear, and put it in here and it'll generate a command. Once you have the command, you're gonna to go to Cursor, Cursor settings, from here, you can click on MCPs, add a server, Put the command and then command the run uh, the command to actually run and it gives you access to all these different toolings like get tickets workflow status add an issue to a project what we're going to do is i'm going to show you exactly uh the current um tickets that we have which is eng 1021 uh where it shows you all the different sub issues that we have for example a table layout issue um, a, a text on overlap, a drop down bug, some side, side nav issues, and we're gonna see if it's able to fix some of this. So uh, right now, for example, if I go to um, one of the split tests that we have in our split testing tool, I believe there should be uh, a bug right now that causes the text to overlap. Let's see. Uh, okay, if I move the page, yep right here. So this is a, there's a bug right there. So let's see if it's able to fix that issue. So uh, what we're going to do is once we have the MCP server set up, I'm just going to pull this up. Uh, and then we're going to say, please review my existing linear tickets, specifically look at this sub issue of UI bugs. And uh, 1021. The sub issue is called fix this overlap on text. Uh, review the ticket. Update the ticket with the problem. Details based on code base. Propose a solution in the ticket. Comment if necessary. And then um, actually implement the solution from the ticket details in the code base. You can uh, study the code base, which it already does, like cursor already indexes your code and knows, but you know, I always like to uh, uh, basically re reference a, a technical overview doc that I have that kind of just uh, gives, gives an idea of how everything is built out. So let's go ahead and see it run specific tool calls within linear uh, for linear to get all the data that it needs around the ticket so we're going to approve the tool call it's going to take a couple steps but i'm curious to see if it's one able to pull the ticket data propose a fix and then from there um, actually fix it and see if it works it may not work we'll see let's see but uh sometimes most of the times it does and it's very detailed and it's going to save you a lot of time for you to do that um, hopefully what we can see in this full intent uh, uh, process is we're able to get the tickets reviewed, update ticket status, generate a fix, and then generate a PR automatically and just get you to save a lot of time. Um, okay, cool. Let's see if it, we, it's asking for the specific sub ID. Uh, let's see if we can pull the actual uh, sub ID. Uh, just, okay, so what we can do is, oh yeah, it's called, it's called eng one, two, three, four. It's a sub issue of UI uh, bugs. Okay. Now we're gonna get issue by ID. So it wasn't able to actually find that specific sub issue. Let's see if it, it's able to do that now. Yep, it's able to see it. Okay. 
And I think sometimes what's helpful is we don't, we're not seeing, it's not far able to find the component. Let's see. Split testing. Yeah. So what we can do is help it find that component. To be honest, I don't remember where it is as well. Uh, blah, 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 experiment list. I think it's right here. Yep. I think, uh, I think it, it's in here. Confirm location component file, or should this be the path? Yep. Okay, so now we're giving it its component. Most cases you don't need to, you know, the indexing is, is uh, you know, it is a complex and big file, and typically uh, I'm, I would be surprised if it got it in one shot, but um, what we're seeing is, uh, you know, oh wow, so boom, perfect. It was able to find the problem, give you technical details, a solution, and let's see if it's actually implementing the solution and gets it working. You know, you, you do have to have that human in the loop interaction where you're able to actually help the agent determine where certain things are. I think this was an isolated incident. In most cases, it is able to pull the code base and determine where things are. Um, I think maybe the technical overview doc that I gave it may have been outdated. Let's see if, um, if it's able to fix this issue. So we're in localhost right now and fingers crossed it's working. Let's see. Oh, no. Uh, let's give it a restart. Hmm. Or maybe is it still making the changes? I'm just... Okay. I'm still seeing the issue when I resize the window, the text overflows. Okay. Oh wow, so now it actually provided a comment. Now in this case, I thought it fixed it, it didn't. Um, and I thought that even though it added truncation, it still didn't work it. So let's see um, if it's able to actually get it right this time. Okay. All right, it's making the change. And this is what I love about it. It's able to fix all these bugs and issues. Hmm, still, still not happening. Hmm, I wonder why. It's still, it's still overflowing. Um, perhaps cause it to line break or truncate it. Um, so the edit menu of the cards are also contained inside. Um, perhaps consider increasing the size of the width and reducing padding in between. Double check your fix, your solution. Okay. All right. This only happens. Let's let's see. I want to console log this to see exactly um, how this is happening. So this only happens on 15, uh, this only happens on screen sizes lower than 1580px width. Okay, let's see if it's able to solve this issue. By the way, amazing spelling. While it's doing that, I'm just gonna check something. Okay. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, it's working here. Uh, 
stack the menu on top, put the title on the, put, put the title below it. Uh, the text should wrap as the size changes. Okay. Let's look check where it's going. Card head, header, pass, split test. Oh. Make sure you're applying it to here where the past split tests are. I don't think it was applying it to the right place. So it wasn't actually looking at past split tests. Um, it was doing it up here uh, at active split tests that we had. That was the issue. So uh, that was the underlying issue with pass split tests. Let's make sure the behavior is consistent with both active and past split tests. Um, I did notice you added extra padding. Uh, let's revert that since we were, let's reduce that. After that, update the linear ticket with the fix. Okay, let's see what happens. So I was able to get it right. We're now seeing the text actually wrap down, which is fantastic, which is exactly what we wanted. So now, um, what we're gonna do is get it to actually generate a PR once it's updated the linear ticket and, and, and get the PR approved. Let's see how that works. We're not gonna get a PR, we're actually gonna do commit just to be easier and faster. We'll do a PR later, but yeah. Um, Did it just completely nuke it? No, perfect, okay. All right, sweet, okay, perfect, great. Um, now it's gonna get us to actually do a linear ticket fix, linear ticket update, let's see what happens. Oh, unknown tool, it probably broke. Let's try again. Oh, oh no, it's okay. What's the best part of this? MCPs are still a work in progress, but that's fine. Uh, that's fine. Just uh, generate a commit and push this. Okay, so what did we cover today? Essentially we covered exactly what MCPs are, how you can use MCPs. In this instance, we use it for ticket manager with Linear, but you can also actually use it to be able to connect it with browsers, like browser tools to do console logging, Screenshot using Puppeteer to actually give you back screenshots of what it's made. So it has context, visual context. You can use agents, browser agents to actually do individual QA and give you essentially um, uh, additional uh, abilities or in, augment your existing agentic workflows while you're coding and save you a lot of time uh, and, and give you the speed that you need. I hope this was helpful. Let me know how you're using MCPs and what you want to see and what you would do. And peace.